Hi Keshav here. Welcome back. So in previous video we saw how do we create mount point for ADLS and have the data loaded from CSV file that is there in ADLS into Databricks. All right. And also we saw how do we transform the data by using Databricks. We we aggregated sales amount and tax amount by grouping with the required columns that is order year, category name and color. All right. We already created a couple of calculated columns like profit and also tax percentage all right and finally we saw how do we create text box and how do we pass the value from text box into variable and we already saw how do we refer that variable in SQL statement and how the data filtered based on the value that we are passing through text box all right and finally we loaded the transform data back to ADLS by creating new CSV file all right and this is the notebook that we created to transform the data and have transform data loaded back to ADLS. All right, these are the high level steps. So let me just walk you through quickly. So I just import the required modules and uh, this is the point where I'm creating mount point. So purpose of mount point already I discussed in previous video. Please, uh, please have a look into my previous video. I will paste the link in the description below so that you can use it for your reference. All right, and here I'm loading the data into Databricks by creating one data frame from the file uh, product underscore sales dot csv that is there in ADLS. All right. I'm just here just converting the uh, order year from integer to string. That's fine. And here just I'm grouping the data based on the columns those I required in my final data set based on order year, category and column and summing up the total sales amount and tax amount. All right. So if you observe here, I'm just it's generic sum. So what it does it will just group the database on the given columns here under group by agree it will perform the aggregate that is sum for all the numeric fields okay so we got two numeric fields that is sales amount and tax amount and once those are uh, aggregated then column names will be created like this sum of sales amount sum of tax amount in this step what i did i just renamed those columns to original name sum of sales to sales amount sum of tax to tax amount that's it in this step, I am creating a couple of calculated columns that is profit. Profit I am creating as sales amount minus tax amount and I am just calculating tax percentage as well. Alright, that's it. Okay, then finally I am just creating one temporary view by loading from DF2 that I created in previous step. In this step, I am just creating one text box. So by using DB utils and this text box will be is created on top if you observe here category is the text box and whatever the value that I am passing through this text box I am just catching into one variable called category. Finally in the select statement I am just referring this variable called category and filtering the data based on the value that we are passing through the text box that's it. Alright in the final step we are just writing back to ADLS by creating new CSV file that is transform underscore product sales dot csv file all right here i'm just you know going for options like mod equal to overwrite in case if the file exists with same name i want to just overwrite that file that's it so um, these are high level steps those i'm performing in this notebook so in this video what i'm going to show you guys i'll show you how do we execute this notebook through adf and how the input value passed from adf through parameter you know and how data filtered based on the value that we are passing and finally uh, create a csv file in adls all right let's go ahead and create the pipeline for that so before going ahead i am just taking up this step because we already created mount point if you try executing again it will throw error saying that the mount point already exists all right so from now onwards we no need to specify this complete connections one point that we already created here referenced here that's it we no need to create again all right so that is the benefit of one point we no need to expose in our account details to the world so i'm just gonna take up this cell that's it so now let's go ahead and create a new pipeline i already launched adf i'm gonna create a new pipeline so pipeline name i'm gonna name it as execute Databricks. All right, I'm gonna go to Databricks. Under Databricks, we got activity called Notebook. So it's pretty simple. If you want to just name it as Databricks, maybe you can say 
database notebook. Okay, let's go ahead and complete the settings under Azure Databricks. Just let's go ahead and create link service for our Databricks. I'm going to name it as ls underscore Databricks. Fine. Subscription. Let me select Workspace. That is KR Databricks demo. Then let me just go ahead and use existing cluster and access token we need to pass access token so this access token we need to generate in databricks let's go back to databricks go to profile under that user settings just generate token all right same you can just queue for your reference maybe i'll say for adf generate let me copy this go back to our adf i passed access token here now i should be able to see our cluster that is care demo that's it let me just go ahead and test the connection yes connection successful let's say create that's it it's been created now let's go to settings under settings what we need to do we need to browse our notebook go to users under users go to your account and account go to the notebook that we created that is kdm all right fine now we can pass the parameters here let's go ahead and create new parameter so before that let me pa let me create one parameter at pipeline level okay go to parameters say new i'm going to name it as category for now i'm not passing any value that's it and let's go back to notebook again under this parameter section let's let's go ahead and say new uh, name it as category okay so this should be exactly the variable name that we created in our databricks okay so let's not do any mistake let's go ahead and copy from there as you know that both variables and parameters those are case since too we need to refer them exactly how we created all right so let me copy this this category and go back to edf fine and the value here we need to get dynamically from the parameter that we created at pipeline level that is category all right fine all done now what i'm going to do i'm going to just say debug that's it once i click on debug it will ask you to pass the parameter value so this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to just say clothing. So whatever the value we are passing here, that is category name. Okay, you need to make sure the exact value is passing. Otherwise, you might end up loading blank values. Okay, there won't be any data loaded. Fine, say okay. Now, let's wait for a few seconds and to, to get this you know notebook executed. it is in progress now it might take a few more seconds once it is executed we can directly go to adls and validate if if data is loaded into csv file or not all right so first let me open that let me go to edit all right now let's see yes it is successfully completed and also we could see data loaded for clothing all right so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just execute the pipeline again by passing different parameter value all right say debug and this time i'm gonna pass different category that is caps all right so i'm expecting data created to be loaded for the category called caps all right go to ADLS refresh so let's not worry about these partitions it is creating partitioned a file that's okay our notebook execution is in progress let's wait for a few more seconds all right completed successfully now let's go back to our ADLS and open the file and this time I'm expecting data to be loaded for category name category name caps right 
so let's open it again all right what happened so let me refresh yep all right see here data is loaded for caps category all right so this is how you can execute you know uh, databix notebook and adf and pass the value through the adf parameters all right so our notebook is dynamic now what what are the value we are passing through the pipeline so for those category values data will be loaded into csv file in adls all right i hope this is clear for you guys thanks for watching my video please do subscribe for more videos from my side on adf databricks and also power bi all right we'll meet again in next video with a different concept until then bye bye thank you